Hello. This lesson we're going to be focusing on ions in living things. So the other day we talked about the basics of bonding. We talked about a particular kind of bond called covalent bonds. We talked about the star of all covalent bonding in biology, and that's carbon. So today we're going to be looking at atoms, atoms that form an entirely different kind of chemical bond. Those atoms are going to form something called an ion. The big idea that we're focusing on in this part of the unit is that we can recognize the six most common elements in organic molecules. The four targets we're going to have today to reinforce our learning is to understand how atoms form ionic bonds and be able to recognize that in a diagram. We're going to be able to recognize that ions are present in living things. And we're going to be able to understand that ions play important roles in those living things. And some key ions that are common to all living things. This ties into the big idea because these ions are actually atoms of some common elements that form organic molecules. So there's three different types of chemical bonds. Today we're focusing on ionic bonds. Just a recap of atoms. The central mass of an atom is called the nucleus, and the two subatomic particles that make up the nucleus and the atomic mass are the neutrons and the protons. The subatomic particles that have no mass that take up the most space in an atom are the electrons. You should notice here down by the key that it tells you something else that's important about these subatomic particles. So let's take a look. This is the basic hydrogen atom. I want you to look at the picture and try to answer these questions. So pause the video, try to answer these questions on your own for a minute. Now that we're back, let's try to answer these questions together. The charge on a proton, you've only got two options. So the, this symbol here tells us, just like in math, that the charge on a proton is positive. That means the charge on the electron is negative. How many protons are there in the nucleus? It's not a trick question. There's only one. There's only one proton because this is hydrogen. It's the smallest of all of the atoms. One of the reasons that it's so small is because it has no neutrons. And because it has one proton, it's going to have one electron. Because the protons and electrons are, uh, they cancel each other out. So there you have a brief review of the anatomy of an atom. For this atom, we're looking at a little bit more of a complicated structure. We'll have to figure out how many protons, neutrons, electrons there are, and what's the atomic number. So remember, protons and neutrons are in the nucleus, and the electrons are orbiting on the outside. So because we're not sure which ones are the red ones and which are the blue ones, what we do know is the number of protons and electrons are equal as they sit on the periodic table. So let's start with those. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight electrons. And there are eight electrons. So as it sits on the periodic table as a neutral atom, there must be eight protons. Now, however many protons there are does not determine how many neutrons unless you know the weight, which we don't, or the mass. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There happens to be another 8, coincidentally, neutrons in this atomic structure. So, 8 protons, 8 neutrons, 8 electrons. The atomic number is equal to one of those. And if you remember from class the other day, the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. So the answer to all of these questions would be 8. All right, so this is going to show up probably as a quiz question. 
So I don't want to give you the answers to these here in the video. I want you to have a chance to answer these on your own. We've talked about the anatomy of an atom. So one, two, and three are asking you for the subatomic particles. Number four is asking you to be specific. Five, six, seven, and eight we just talked about earlier in the, in the video. And then nine is a review from the last couple of lessons. I don't want to give you these answers, but I want you to try to answer them and then see how well you do in class. So I'm going to bring this up as a warm up for class. This is your chance to have the questions ahead of time. All right. We're just going to remind ourselves that if you look at an element in its atomic structure as you would as it sits on the periodic table, you need to realize that there's going to be the same number of protons as electrons in that atom because it's not bonding with anything when you look at it and as its properties sit on the periodic table. But in nature, everything, almost everything is going to bond with something because the only ones that don't are those noble gas groups on the end. Atoms are constantly losing or gaining electrons as they form and break bonds. Now, since we're talking about ionic formation or ion bonds, what you need to understand is if an atom loses an electron to be happy with their eight, to get below that one valence electron, that's going to result in a positive charge. If an atom gains an electron to meet eight, then it's going to have a negative charge. So if you think about the number of positives and negatives being equal when before the bond starts, after the bond, if the atom results in, say, five positives and four negatives, there's going to be a more positive overall charge. After the bond, if the atom that we're looking at at the time ends up with three protons, but for electrons, then it's going to be overall negative because electrons are negative because there's going to be one electron that's not canceled out. So that's how ion charges form. Um, some examples that we t that we'll see in biology are sodium. If you look how sodium and chlorine form a bond here, they haven't showed you any of the electrons beneath the valence electron of sodium, the one valence electron that sodium has here. There are 10 other ones between this valence electron and the nucleus, but for simplicity, they didn't show you that. And in the same in chlorine, there are 10 below this level, um, the valence level and the nucleus. So there are 10 electrons you're not seeing. But I want you to think about something. If sodium's electron level below this valence shell has eight electrons, it's easier for the sodium to give up one. Likewise, chlorine is only one away from eight. So yeah, it can share, but it's, especially with a bond with chlorine, with sodium, it's more likely to just pull that electron right off. So it's not partial custody at that point, it's full custody. So if the sodium loses a charge that is negative, i.e. an electron, then it's an overall positive charge. If a chlorine gains one extra negative charge in the form of an electron, there's an overall negative charge. So why do we even care? Ions are required for a lot of things that happen to maintain our um, metabolism and homeostasis. Our nerve cells use electrons, our muscle cells use electrons, etc. An ionic bond is when those two atoms that have gained or lost an electron sort of get stuck together. They end up being very attracted to each other because there's a positive and a negative charge afterward. You see how the resulting atom, what we call an ion now because there's a charge, is positive for sodium and negative for chlorine. And because you know that positives and negatives, opposites, attract, then you should be able to understand why those two things are going to be stuck together in nature. So that's technically a bond, this attractive force that exists between the two new ions 
it's not an overlapping of electrons they're not actually sharing but it is a an attractive force so we call it a bond so just to summarize an, an ionic bond you can think about one atom actually giving for good one of their electrons to the other atom they're not sharing it's not a, a deal or a compromise they are completely giving it up or completely taking it depending on which atom in the bond you're focusing on to learn more about ionic bonding you can visit that list of videos that I gave you at the beginning of the unit the unit introduction and it's got uh, a brief description of each of the videos by the link so feel free to peruse through those and and review as much as you want ions in the body play a huge role in a lot of different metabolism processes life processes homeostasis and maintaining all of those internal conditions we call them electrolytes when ions are dissolved in a solution or water and that's how we'll talk about them when we talk about their importance in the body you've heard of electrolytes if you've drink drank gatorade before that's what they refer to those as they're dissolved salts or ions so some common electrolyte or ions dissolved in water that our body needs are sodium magnesium and potassium um, calcium as well although we, we rarely drink that except in milk um, so take a minute write these down make sure that you have a chance to understand how they fit into your body there are four learning targets that we addressed at the beginning of this video and you need to make sure you take a minute and figure out where you are in your understanding of this if you have any questions I need you to reach out to me bring them up in class or send me an email or text me thank you guys